going to work on just making our selection. I'm going to merge this little crab guy with the other stuff. You've probably already got the idea where you just kind of pull over your ob object selector or your magic wand or any of your tools. And I'm going to go with this. And then... Get it to select it, select inverse, and get rid of everything else. Then I'm going to go over to my little octopus guy, do the same thing here. That object select, you guys, you can't beat it. Like, it is so cool that they even have that. I don't know how many um, high school and college and work for different companies where I had to, like, sit there and lasso for far too long. And then I'm going to... <clears throat> take him over to my new layer, make him larger. I'm also going to now take the crab and get rid of this frog and alligator. Don't really want them a part of this. This is when you know you have too many things open. I'm just gonna window copy. Pop over here, window paste. Of course, you wanna actually bring something over with you. Window copy. Window paste. All right. So for this, I'm going to take his little legs off. This is probably all review, but I'm using a different lasso tool to take off the legs of the crab. I'm going to close that and delete them. Same thing over here. The reason why I went with the polygon lasso tool, sometimes I just like the clean cuts. It's less clicks, doesn't take as much time. Not really working for that super exact measurement as much as I just want it to be done. Now, for the octopus, on the other hand, I'm going to use the magnetic wand tool, and I want to kind of get a couple of these textures going. So I'm kind of following the line work in the little squid's body. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take off his head. And then deselect, bringing over the crab. Window T or Command T, or you can also go Edit, Transform. Those are all great ways to kind of get this display going. I'm going to merge this as big as I can. Get it going. Edit, Transform, Rotate. Sometimes I forget that you guys aren't sitting with me, so when I do the keyboard shortcuts, that teaches you nothing. But there's a ton of them that you can use. I have a bunch of little resources too I can always email over. So I've got the crab here. What I'm going to do in my layers is pull the crab behind the legs and he already kind of matched in that color scheme and this is where I'm going to right click <clears throat> and scroll down to uh, merge visible and then that's when I'll zoom in and I can do a couple things. One with my healing um, brush tool, I can just come in here and I can pull and move this texture up, but you'll notice it's kind of just blurring it because it's so big. The other option that I have is to go um, up to the top and turn this down so that it does very small adjustments and I can just zigzag right on that line and it blends a little better than the big. Sometimes you have to kind of mess with it and decide what you want to do. The other thing that I find that can be helpful is if I take a selection that I want to merge a little better together, then I can go edit, content aware fill, and then I can mess with it on this side. And did you see how it blended that in so much better just by kind of clicking what I wanted it to grab and then let it merge itself in. So that's the one I like. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'll move on to my next section. And my next section is this one. And then I'm going to come here. Content aware. Mm. Hit cancel because I want to make sure I'm on the right layer. 
and then you go edit content aware fill and then kind of build it up i'm looking at the one screen but i'm matching it with this one and i'm kind of just messing with it going back it's too much for me on that one side it brought like the spine of the crab up and I'm not a fan of that, so I'm going to hit Windows Z to go back, and maybe I'm going to pull from up here. And that's not too bad. And I like that, and then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to deselect, and then I'm going to come in with that patch healing brush now, and I'm just going to clean up that area, maybe get rid of this spine. Um, this junk that ended up occurring over here, I'm just gonna patch aware that right out of it. Um, that came over when I lassoed really fast. Like, of course, if I was going to do this for a long time and not just show the little tips and tricks, I'd probably go back in and make sure that everything was kind of all kosher and right for it. Coming in here, see it's just kind of pulling at that green and the red. Um, definitely might get rid of this crease. Blending. I like how this is blended because when I zoom out, it makes it look like those um, tentacles are like actually part of that crab. So again, I'm gonna come in here with my lasso tool and doing a little organic cut. The more choppy you are with that, it gives it more fringe to work with, and then it kind of makes that patch better. You wouldn't want to take a square patch and put it on an organic. Now, if you are doing something geometric, you'd really want to work in your squares. Landscape design, square patches work great. Like if you're ever trying to remove houses from a background, if you get like part of the mountain, you want to cut that so then you can flip it and then continue the mountains over. But when you're doing something on like an animal where things just have more textures you don't really want it to be super squared edit content aware fill kind of decide I want to go up here yeah like how that looks very nice I'm just kind of clicking through double checking that I like that when I do I hit OK and then I go on to my next section which is this one edit content aware fill and doing that same thing it oh i was not on the right layer just always want to make sure you're on the right layer edit content aware fill and i like that so then i'm going to click off of everything deselect zoom out and it's starting to come together. Now I might have to do one where I come in here and I do a larger section, or um, we're gonna learn how to do brush tools in the future where you can take a section of it and you can um, edit and define a brush preset and hit okay. And then depending on your color, if you brush it, it's going to have that same texture. So that was white. But if I came in here and I picked up that color and I used that brush and I brushed it over, um, that too could be something that then you would blend out, maybe make it a little less opaque so you could see a little more. And that too is... Um, another way but of course that was very geometric I probably would have done it um, more with a lasso tool where you come in and define your brush preset so there's lots of different ways my biggest one is to get my lasso of the problem area that I'm trying to merge go edit content aware fill because it's pulling all those things that look similar and then applying it um, Definitely make sure you watch your layers. I've been terrible at that today, and I just think it's because I've been working in layers all day long, but make sure that you're watching your layer. If you do your content fill and you're on your layer with um, your crab originally, then that's just going to make it easier for you to pull in and really get those colors and lines 
to go away and then you can build it out um, so I hope that was helpful um, if you want me to go through more I'll probably just continue to do more on the screen if you want to watch you can also um, if you work in your lasso tool you can adjust things and then if you happen to make it too big like let's say I want here it's not affecting anything outside of the lasso tool too. That's like another really good thing about lasso tools is anything inside of it won't affect the rest. And you can kind of just keep going till it blends itself. And then when you click off and you zoom out, you've got a little crabby octopus guy that then you could um, right click, merge visible, and then there's some different blending options. I love blending options. They're really great for getting work to um, have some more depth to it. Like an outer glow really makes something look dimensional. And I usually pull an outer glow from a color that's already in the illustration. And it just kind of helps things stand out. If you've ever seen a strong portrait, they usually have a light outer glow around the image so that you can actually see the person and it, they come out of the background a little bit. Um, and outer glows are great because you can make them opaque. So I'm just trying to get as much on the screen as you can see as you want, but then if they're there just a little bit, it will definitely help make your object pop. Um, you'll see it a lot in overlays, especially in like video and animations where you need that spark of depth to take away from the background. 